rest even on a slow day. So it might be a blur for people. And I, I want them to be able to just breathe it in and just think about questions versus uh, scrambling to take notes. Um, because so, of, Kelly, we are recording, so you're all good. Perfect. Because of our limited time together, typically I will do a visual presentation. I find them to be far more powerful. Uh, most people are visual learners and they have kind of a wow factor, but we don't have that kind of time. So I have a plethora of notes. Feel free to ask questions at the end. I want to make sure I give you as much as I can. Quick background on me. I was a Fortune 500 girl. I worked with one of the major ad agencies in the Minneapolis area. It's a big agency town here. Then I wound up at Rollerblade. If any of you have been on inline skates in your life, uh, I was part of the team that created a billion dollar industry for, for rollerblading. Um, then I found myself in the housing industry. It was by accident. I didn't want to go to Best Buy or Target, which is here in my local market. So that's where I got my feet wet in your space. I know real estate better than any other industry. It is uh, selfishly my very, very favorite. Uh, so I absolutely have walked several miles in your shoes. So I think I bring a lot of relevance to this conversation. Uh, that being said, I own my own boutique branding agency. I cherry pick my gigs. Greg is one of my very favorite people. Uh, if he dials, I answer. And so uh, I'm really, really honored to be here with you guys today. Okay, without further ado, let's, let's get cracking. Greg asked me to speak on personal brand for you today. I know that you're probably very familiar with it because he talks about it a lot, but I just want to kind of set the table for you. And I will be looking down periodically because I want to make sure I wrote all my notes and I don't want to miss anything. Um, what is a brand? What most people think in the world that a brand is, is a logo. It has nothing to do with a logo at all. A uh, brand is actually made up of 16 pieces and parts. That is a half day workshop. We're not gonna go there. I'm gonna just enlighten you with a handful of silver bullets. Uh, but just know that it isn't a logo. As a matter of fact, what brand is, is a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling about a person, in our case today, uh, or a product, a company, um, typically what I do is I give an example, the VW bug. Everybody knows what the Beetle is, right? And we can envision the driver. We can also envision the driver in the BMW, right? They are not the same driver. But ironically, both are German-made vehicles with four wheels and a, dry, and a steering wheel. It gets you from point A to point B, right? But because of brand and specifically positioning, which we're going to get into in a little bit, that decides who buys. And ultimately for you, if you are not a dynamo in sales, as only about 10% of the population are really, really naturally gifted in it, uh, you got to have some additional tools in your toolbox to cover that deficit. What we want to do is connect dots for people. So it's a yes, because it's a no until it's a yes. And so it's my job when hired is to eliminate all no's for people. Okay. So the difference between a corporate brand and a personal brand, all right, corporate brand would be um, you, you see it in your industry, it would be the XYZ team that is considered a corporate brand versus your first name, last name, which is a personal brand. Okay. A lot of people say, which, which way should I go? Well, it depends. Do you want the business to survive you? Do you want this to be a legacy business or is it saleable? Is the brand saleable? If you're hit by a bus, do you want your business to die with you? Those are things that I consider when I'm advising somebody. You know, there's this perception of, of corporate branding, which is a they game, okay? And a lot of people get this wrong. When you have a corporate brand, it is about your audience, what they want to hear, what they want to see, how they want to feel. A lot of founders screw this up. They'll create logos and choose color palettes and imagery and the words they use based on their own personal preference. That's wrong. It is all about your buyer in a corporate branding environment. In a personal brand, it is completely different. It's a we game. It's how we show up, how we feel, what we think about things, and then we attract people who resonate with us. Does that make sense? The difference between the two? Shake of heads? Yes? No? Okay, we've got movement. All right, very good. If you take nothing else from me today, take this one thing, okay? Your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Let me explain that. Um, 
I gave a presentation, I showed some imagery on the board and I said this, and, a, and, I, and I gave the presentation to a group of lawyers, women lawyers, very buttoned up, you know, their suits, coiffed hair, a lot of name brands, uh, all, all, all over them. And a, ba a group in the back started to laugh when I said that, uh, when I showed some imagery of before and after of a woman, she was a hot mess. And they laughed and I said, ladies, what's so funny? And they said, that's our receptionist, Sally. And they named her, they ridiculed her, they made fun of her, they high-fived each other like the movie Mean Girls. And I could not believe it. I mean, it's perfect fodder for what it is that I teach, but the point is some grown-ass adults, all buttoned up and polished, presenting themselves to a group, decided to go rogue and out this poor girl. Do we think that that receptionist has any idea that she's being talked about when she's not in the room? You know, a study came out recently by Forbes that said that 15% of us have truly defined our personal brand. And of that 15 or 15%, 5% of us are living it every day. Okay, that is really poor statistic. But the worst part of the statistic is, the, the, is that 70% of us think that we've worked on personal branding and of that 70%, 50% of us think we're living it every day. What does that mean? Cold, hard math. We are all walking around like a hot mess and we don't even know it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to give you some, some, some tips and tricks on how you can show up very specifically um, so that you can, um, that you can leave an impression with your audience that you choose uh, versus leaving it up to their own devices to decide. How many times have you met someone and at first blush you're like, whoa, I don't know, I don't like this person, they bug me or rub me the wrong way. And the longer you get to know them, you're like, oh my God, they're gonna be my next best friend. It's because that person did not do a good enough job explaining to you or setting the table for you the things about themselves that will resonate with you or that share truly who they are in their authentic self. One of the uh, examples that I do when I have a lot of time and I'm live is I have candy up at the front of the, of the room and I ask for a volunteer to come up. And I say, pick your favorite candy and they always pick peanut M&Ms and I don't know why, I haven't figured that out. But I'll say, please describe the candy. And they'll say, melt in your mouth, not in your hands, candy coated shell, peanut center, you know, love it. Everyone's like, yeah, I love it too. And then I say, thank you very much. Now can you describe yourself? Total crickets. I mean, total crickets. And of course, they're mortified and then they sit down. And I always say, what did we learn here? What we learned is uh, in April, I turned 51. All right, I have been in this body over half a century. You would think that I would know myself better than anybody else. And given the opportunity to stand in front of the room and have someone say, Kelly, tell us about yourself, I should be able to say in two minutes or less everything I want you to know so that you buy what I'm selling. It's called a transition theory, two minutes. I could teach it to you another time or send it to you in a different format, but the transition theory is key when you are trying to uh, close the loop on something or connect those, those missing dots, but we don't have time to really talk about that today, okay? The key is differentiation. Uh, you've heard Greg talk about that, and differentiation shows up in something called positioning. Positioning is why you, why you. All right, everybody in that room can tell me what you do for a living, right? You're all real estate agents, but who cares? So is everybody else, <laughs> you know? Like you are a commodity just like I am. So why, why would somebody choose you? I'm gonna give you an example. Um, two real estate agents, both work for Keller Williams in the same office. They're in cube side by side and they're both men. I want to sell my house. I am friends with both of them. Which one would I choose? Which one? It's apples to apples. Commission rate's the same. I like them both the same. They're at the same broker. Why? If they can't tell me the difference between the two of them, their why, their onlyness, they lose, right? Because I have way too many other options to choose in your industry. 
So what you want to do is you want to figure out what your onlyness is. The only thing that you provide to the world and your, your business, your industry, that no one else can do. People are like, Kelly, you know what? In theory, that sounds really great. In practice, that's really hard. Yeah, that's why people from the really warm climates fly all the way to Minneapolis in negative 23 degree wind chill weather to work with me to help me perform the lobotomy on them to get the answers for them. But in lieu of you doing that, I want you to think about something. What would your customers miss if you didn't exist? What would they miss? What would your customers miss if you didn't exist? If you can answer that question, you win. One of the things that I find really helpful is Simon Sinek's book, Purple Cow. I don't know if you've ever heard of that book, but if you read, if you do any self-development work, StrengthsFinder 2.0 is a great resource. It helps, it helps um, um, identify your top five strengths in business. This is not personality profiling. It's all about your skills and attributes, which is really, really critical when you're trying to differentiate yourself. But also Purple Cow talks about, you know, if you look in a field of cows, they're all black, white, and brown. But what if you saw a purple cow? You know, what, what would you do? You would stand up and take notice. Now, I'm not suggesting you go all wild like Miley Cyrus. But what I am saying is that you need to come up with something that's remarkable, something that is uniquely you, something that, it, that only you can provide. So if you are hit by the bus, we are all, we all lose because we did not have you in our world, okay? So again, people are like, yeah, Kelly, really tough. How, where do I start? What is the, what is the work that I need to do, all right? Well, first of all, you need to figure out who you are, you gotta define it. You're gonna have to look, look internal, right? Because if you can't stand up in front of the room and give me your two minute why you, right? Describe yourself and have you know, not put everybody to sleep. You wanna think about some things like vision, purpose, and mission. Vision, what do you see for your life? Purpose, why were you put on this earth to do this work? Why are you in real estate and not an accountant? Why? And then lastly, mission, how are you gonna make a difference? You need to communicate that to your audience because they need to get you and they need to understand why they should give you their money because you know how weird people are about paying out a commission. They think you guys are a necessary evil. I get it, I have been there and I understand that there needs to be this paradigm shift and Greg is working um, feverishly to help change that, that mindset and not let other companies come in and tarnish what your value is. But in lieu of that, as everybody is piranha picking away at your, your industry, you've got to carve out a piece for yourself that's uniquely you. Okay. So again, I know what you do, but you need to tell me what you are known for, what are you known for, and what happens because of you. Okay, so what are you known for? Let's use me as the example. People will say, Kelly, okay, so you're a brand strategist. That's what you do. But what are you known for? Well, I'm known as the Olivia Pope of branding for who, you know, any of you who've ever watched the, the, the show Scandal. And when people say, okay, at the end of the day, what happens because of you? Like, what, what am I going to get? And my answer is, I'm going to help you win. So if you hire me, you win. If, the, if your competition has an opportunity to eat ramen noodles or it's you, it will be you, period. And how I do that is I create things visually, verbally, and experientially that creates a narrative and a picture that is so frothy that people will look in your direction and say, yes, thank you, may I have another? That's the whole point, okay? So if you can answer some of these, now all of a sudden, by the way, no one else is doing this unless they've actually heard me speak. And even when they do, they have um, analysis paralysis and they cannot implement some of this stuff. So if you're able to even take some of what I'm telling you and do something with it, you win. Because you will leapfrog everybody else who's just on autopilot thinking that they just got to knock on a whole bunch of doors and it's a numbers game. You know, I'm, I am of the mindset, work smarter, not harder. Okay. Okay, uh, last thing, we're gonna talk about the power of three. There are three parts to brand I want you to know about, and it's image, it's voice, it's promise. Image is how you look, voice is how you sound, promise is how you show up, and what you deliver, okay? So image, image is how you look, it's your pictures. If any of you do not have a professional headshot, 
if, if on your LinkedIn profile, on your social media pages, on your website, I'm going to highly suggest that you carve out a few of your commission dollars and go get yourself a professional headshot. And I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. Um, most people cut their, most pe people have a picture and they're sitting like this. Okay. Don't do that. Everybody else does that. You need to just shake it up. Have something more lifestyle. Look off to the side, be laughing. Have it be maybe a little more cheeky or more uh, in alignment with your personality. If you're very stoic, that's one thing. But if you have a really great personality, you want to reflect that. I'm going to give you an example. Oh, and um, don't cut your picture out of some wedding or, you know, you're at a birthday party. Don't, don't do that. Don't cheat yourself. Because as I mentioned earlier, most people are visual learners. They decide based on what they see in most cases. Right? So if I'm going to self-select in or out, if Greg says to me, you, Kelly, you will love this agent. You need to work with this person, right? I'm going to go two places. I'm going to go to your website and your LinkedIn profile, and I'm going to verify for myself, self-select in or out for myself, if I believe Greg. Now, just because he likes you doesn't mean I'm going to, okay? So you want to make sure that the tools that you have to sell yourself when you can't be in the room, because Ladies and gentlemen, you are not scalable. You cannot morph yourself into multiple people and you can't do one-to-one -one, um, conversations 24 seven. That's not realistic. To, so to scale up your business, you need to have some virtual um, tools that will help you. But I'm gonna give you a quick little example. Uh, Greg, how much time do I have? Uh, you just keep going. This is so good. You've got <laughs> as, much time, as much time as you need. Okay, I'm almost done. So I, I, I hope you're, you're hanging on for dear life. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to give you an example of picture, vision, right? It, or image, how you look. I had an, uh, an opportunity to stand in line with about 250 people to get Damon John's signatures. Everyone watch Shark Tank. Do we know who Damon John is? Well, he's in my space, right? Probably a guy I should know. So I bought his overpriced book and stood in line with all the other uh, super fans waiting for my photo op. Uh, and as I approached, you know, that what, what happens is his handlers and bodyguards take your cell phone, you hand your book to Damon, he signs it with a Sharpie, photo op and then they, sho they shove you through it is a total cattle call right and it the line is clipping along and it's it's on now it's my turn I hand my phone over and I look at Damon and I hand him my book and he stops and he looks at me and he says how do I know you I'm like you don't and he says no I know I know you I'm like no dude you really don't he says I never forget a face I know I know you now by this time his bodyguards are a little upset and they're much larger than me so I'm not gonna argue with them I get my photo op he uh, subsequently does not sign my book I have one dot as a sharpie I, I would show it to you but I don't want to waste the time but he was so dumbfounded and I did not have an opportunity to tell him how I think he knew me which is one year ago, almost to the date, I was in Nashville listening to him speak on stage at a, at a conference called Inc. Magazine's Grow Co. event. And I had connected to him or attempted to on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, by the way, will make you a lot of money. A lot of money. That's another class. Maybe Greg will have me back to teach you LinkedIn, but I'm telling you, it's shooting fish in a barrel. Okay, so I connect and someone on his team connects with me, right? They accept my connection. And because I'm so active on LinkedIn, my picture, my face, my thumbnail is trending. So if, he, if Jamie and John post something, I comment. Or if something in our industry happens, I comment. So what happens was when he says, how do I know you? It's because he saw my thumbnail picture on LinkedIn populating for the past year. That's the power of an image, okay? And then before we uh, move to voice, how many of you own your first name, last name, .com? Show of hands. Okay, how many of you own your kids' first names, last names.com? Okay, here's what I'm going to suggest that you do as homework. It is a very, very good investment that you own your first name, last name.com, and you go buy first name, last name.com for all of your kids, and every year renew that for $12.99 and um, put it under the Christmas tree for them. Here's why whether you need your name or utilize it or not is almost irrelevant, but more important, the new trend right now is domain investing. And people are spending a lot of money trying to get their first name, last name back because these investors are buying them up and squatting on them and reselling them for thousands and thousands of dollars. My best friend is a domain investor and he just sold fiction.com for $100,000. This is a no joke zone. 
all right? I'm gonna tell you a real life story. That it, it's, it's kind of sad, but I have an ex-client who lost her husband to suicide. There were no resources to help her little kids at the time. So she started her bu a business to help small children who have dealt with the loss of a parent through suicide. Her brother-in-law, her husband's brother, blamed the suicide on her. Went out and bought her first name, last name .com, Put together a website and a smear campaign and continues to post what a horrible, hateful human being she is, that she in fact killed her brother, or his brother, okay? The last time I pulled that slide, it was viewed 440,000 times. So if you Google her name because she is on stage talking the good word about helping little people, that's what pops up. I would highly recommend at least owning your first name, last name .com and give your kids a chance. My son is a, is a junior at college. When he was a freshman, had a chance to study abroad in Cuba. He found himself in a bar doing tequila shots with some CEO of a major US corporate uh, corporation, a, a Fortune 50 company. And the guy said, Joey, I like you. When we get back to the States, let's connect. Do you have a business card or a website? He said, no. And when he got off the plane, he says, mom, I get it. Will you please help me? I need my first name, last name .com now. And thank God I had been buying it for him since he was in fourth grade. Moving on, voice. Voice is verbal and nonverbal communication skills and attitude. It's not what you say exclusively. It's also how you say it. How many of you are unfriending people on Facebook since at the election? How many people are watching people go mental on social media because they're unhappy about things? Yes, right? And this stuff is permanent, you guys. All you need to do is be able to take a screen grab. Like you can have your rants. I'm suggesting maybe not be so exposed online. But not only is it how you show up on social media, right? Because it seems like that's where we air a lot of our dirty laundry, which is really interesting to me. But also your introduction. Do you have a firm handshake, right? Do you make eye contact? Is your phone in your hand? Do you swear like me? Do you clear your throat? What is your accent like? When I stand next to my friend Deb from Dallas, and I am from Minneapolis, so I sound like the movie Fargo, right, with my long O's, when the two of us stand next to each other, it is like a Bravo show, it is so funny, because we open our mouth and it couldn't be more polarizing based on our accents that you get judged based on things like that you know and when i when i speak in california they always say to me are you from fargo <laughs> no and i've seen the movie and i'm totally insulted okay um last is is promise so promise is what do you deliver we all know that when a real estate transaction is taking place every single a touch point or experience leading up and following the closing is a direct reflection on you because the person who hired you hired you to make sure that it was smooth sailing and some of this stuff is out of your control so I have here in the north a lot of snow as you all know I have a real estate agent locally back in the olden days when you would have brochures in the brochure box on the sign right he used to have a team come out and shovel and by the way, it wasn't three weeks ago and we had 18 inches of snow, which is just bizarre. But the point is, he's out there hand shoveling a path to these brochure boxes. He did a whole bunch of other stuff too. But rarely does anybody go that extra mile. So the question is, you know, what is the experience? What do you deliver? How, how is that experience with you? And you want to be able to communicate that out. Geico can save you 15% or more on car insurance, right? Geico, when they put out that marketing ad, that advertisement, stole a bunch of market share from everybody else on that alone. Why? Because their promise was, we will save you 15 more percent. I mean, who wouldn't want that? And is it not true that that is how we vote in our election, is based on promise, what these candidates will, will they promise they'll do? Now, I have yet to see anybody actually do all the things that they say they're going to do, but the point is, that's how we vote, right? It's like, I will do this, that makes sense to me, I'm going to vote for you. Apple is notorious for this. They lead with their why. If you get a chance and have an extra 15 minutes, go to Simon or uh, go to um, Simon Sinek's Start With Why. It is a video YouTube and it is brilliant. It basically talks about how Apple reverse engineered leading with the why 
then the how, and then saying what they sell to make them the number one value brand in the world, and they've held the position, the, the, that position for uh, several years. And it's because they started with the why, which is the thing I talked about earlier. Um, and then lastly, everybody knows who Taylor, Taylor Swift is, right? She is a um, singer, very, very young, and very uh, popular. Apple, since we're talking about Apple, put out a marketing campaign in 2015. They said, oh my God, we have this great idea. If you customer buy a subscription, a year subscription from us, we will let you stream free music for three months. What a smoking hot deal, right? I mean, how awesome would that be? Taylor was not happy. Taylor Swift wrote an open letter to Apple and she said, here's the deal guys, I am rich. I can pay my team and myself, but there are starving artists everywhere in the world who are living in the backseat of their car, not able to put, put two nickels together, and they are talented, and you are basically giving away their intellectual property for free. That is not okay with me, and if you run the campaign, I'm out. In other words, I'm pulling all of my music, all of it. Apple, from the number one brand in the world. She was gonna pull all of her music. Apple pulled the campaign because Taylor Swift pitched a hissy fit. That's the power of a promise, okay? And I'm gonna leave you with this very, very last thing and then we're done, I'll open up with questions or you know, Greg may just kick me off the stage, which is fine, which is this. You guys need to set yourself apart, differentiator, in a couple other ways. Number one, if you do not have your own website, you lose. Don't attach a page to your broker. There's no way to measure, number one, Google Analytics to find out if there's anybody trolling on your site, checking you out. There's no way to measure bounce rate or what pages they're looking at. And by the way, if a Greg says to me, Kelly, go check out my person, and you're attached to the broker, right? You took their free page. I'm gonna say, if they didn't invest in themselves, then what makes me think they're gonna invest that very much in me? It is a perception play, besides it being this virtual storefront that you need to sell yourself when you're not in the room. But I will tell you that I've made real estate agents a ton of money because of that one change, which is their own virtual storefront. Get yourself your own website, it is critical. And then do something with your LinkedIn profile, because I'm going there. I'm going there, I wanna see how legitimate you are. And there is a whole bunch of stuff that you could do on LinkedIn without actually participating on the site, right? Because I mean, who has time to, to you know, babysit all of these social platforms? I'm just saying there's a lot of money there for you to have. And, and, in, a, and in an executive uh, person, if you, are in an, if you are moving into sort of an affluent uh, audience and you wanna sell to that, that buyer, they're on LinkedIn, that's where they're hanging out. That's all I got for you in, in this moment. I hope you found it helpful. Hey, Kelly, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Didn't I tell you to like rock? So, Kelly, how would you recommend um, we get started? You know, by, I mean, if you're, somebody's just getting started developing their own personal business brand, what are the first steps? Well, you have to decide if you're gonna be a corporate or personal brand, that's number one. Um, and then once you do, you have to establish the why you do some positioning work. Also look at your competition. You want to look at what, who you're competing against in your market. One of the examples I give is, well, nobody really does what I do, or, you know, I don't really need to know my competition. That's BS. If I want a boyfriend, I got options. I can hire a relationship coach. I could go on match.com or I could sit at the bar. The end result, the solution is the man. The experience is what's different. So what I would say to you is, figure out personal versus corporate brand, look at your competition to see how you can leverage yourself against them, where they have gaps. Then what you wanna do is the why you, do your positioning work, and then launch. Get yourself some brand identity, um, so you have a visual element that people can lob onto because most people are visual learners. And remember, you're either Tiffany, or Walmart, or somewhere in between. But if your price tag is Tiffany and you look like Walmart, you're screwed. And again, you gotta have a website. Uh, any questions, anyone? <laughs> yeah, Roxy? So you, you were listing three things, but you were clearly talking faster than I could write. You talked about who am I, what am I known for, and what was the third one? 
What happens because of you? Thank you. Okay, Elizabeth. Hi, thank you. Um, so if you were partnered as a team, would you recommend doing the same type of things for a team and putting together a website um, if you're working, you know, together? And doing that more than just, would you still do a personal one and your team or? Well, who are you? Are you a team member or are you the leader of the team? Well, Kelly, let me clarify. So in the back, in the back, we have we have our sales leading team and they're known as Girls on Fire. Nice. Oh, yeah. Girls on Fire. So why don't you three stand up? And actually, Teresa is the she's our broker and manager. But there's there's the Girls on Fire. Teresa. Yes. And, <laughs> and so they have an amazing name in my view girls on fire how does that how does Brandy get better than that in terms of the name so what elizabeth was asking with that i guess with that girls on fire brand um how would you recommend they get started okay so girls on fire brand def definitely needs to, to be the umbrella brand <clears throat> i would highly recommend that each one of your team members have their own sub page that they can spotlight themselves as an individual. And then really what's gonna indicate whether or not they come up with their own, which I don't think they need to. If, if, the, if the broker of the team is doing a really, really good job for their people, they're investing in some of these marketing assets to help grow the individual team members' uh, businesses, right? So you could have your own page. So when you come into the About Us tab, it could be about Girls on Fire, as, as a group, you know, what do we stand for? And then it could be the broker, and then it could be the team. And you could click on each person's picture and it could open into an independent page and you could talk all about you and tell your story and, and give people a real piece of yourself. You can redirect directly to that page, right? You can have um, landing pages that are campaign specific. And as you swap team members in and out, it's really easy. Don't do the group shot. Those are obsolete in like two and a half seconds. Do individual shots, and um, then those are easy to swap out. Yeah, and, uh, and we could build out a page for you on the Hague Partners website, which I'd be thrilled to do. You guys just work out some branding, some cool photos, positioning statement, what makes you different, why are you girls on fire? I mean, that would be a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, Christine. <laughs> Uh, Christine? Strength Finder book. Strength Finder. Let me tell you. There's two of them. Yep, I'm going to tell you right now. Tom Rath, R A T H. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Kelly, how can, uh, do you have resources? Uh, God, yes. Well, I know. I mean, I know you do. <laughs> so it was a loaded question. Uh, book, videos, whatever. How can uh, everyone here get in touch with you, access your resources, et cetera? In other words, pitch yourself. Well, I don't, I, I'm not here to sell, guys. I'm just, I here know, to, I know. I'm just here to teach. You know, Greg is my pal, and I will do anything for him. But here's the deal. If you need help, if you need free resources, go to brandbykellykelly.com. That is my personal brand site to help entrepreneurs, and there are a ton of free resources. That's where I'm hanging out. I have a really, really strong blog. Very, very good stuff. I've written a book uh, called Moolah G, which is a brand and marketing primer. Literally A to Z, what you need to do, why you need to do it, and how you need to do it. It is the catch-all book. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and if you want to be part of my Facebook group, it's called The Movement, and it's M-O-O hyphen V hyphen M-E-N-T. If you want to talk to me on a regular basis, that's where I am. So that's, that's sort of an engagement component. The phone number you see on my website is my cell phone. If I'm not sleeping or in the shower, I will answer it. Okay, so if you've got questions, and Greg can reach me as well, but uh, really the Brand by Kelly site is probably the best thing for you guys. There's something called the Five Day Brand Challenge for those of you who could stomach Pinterest. It's a very, very easy way for you to create visually a, mood, a brand mood board that you can then give to a graphic designer, a copywriter, and a web developer, and they, you can say, hey guys, this is my point of view. Now build me a damn brand. If you wanna do it on the cheap, right? There's a lot of resources. And the other thing is, make sure that when you're hiring talent, 
these independent contractors to help build your brand. You want everybody in a boat with an oar rowing in the same direction. You have got to create a creative brief for the graphic designer. You have to art direct the tone of voice for your copy. And I'm telling you what, a web designer and a developer are not the same person. They are two separate people. They're liars if they tell you they're the same. Regardless, the book explains it all. My website will talk about it and Greg knows where to find me. So whatever I can do to support you, know that I am literally a stone's throw away. Uh, what was the Facebook group again? The Facebook group is the, T-H-E, movement, M-O-O hyphen V hyphen M-E-N-T. It's a play on words. Obviously, moo. So for those of you, if you wanted just a quick history lesson, the word branding came from branding the back end of a cow. Because back in the olden days, when the cows would wander the fields, nobody could tell their cow from their neighbors unless the rear end of them was branded. And so moology is all about cow making money and the psychology behind branding, right? And then the movement is how to grow a business through branding. Perfect. Kelly, any other questions? Good. So Kelly, I will be buying for a gift uh, for everybody here. I'll be ordering your book today for everybody in the room from Amazon. So you guys will, you guys will have that at the next sales meeting. I'll be handing that out. And Kelly, you are totally amazing. You wouldn't come to Arizona without coming and visiting us in person, would you? I would absolutely get on a plane. And not only that, Greg, that if anybody wants my book signed, if you buy them through me, I'll sign them all and ship them. Oh, well then we'll just, I'll give you a call and we'll buy them through you and then Amazon doesn't get its cut and you're, you're totally good. And you know what? I would totally fly out. If you could put some people in a room, I would totally fly out and do a workshop with everybody. Seriously. I, I, I assure you I can put some people in a room. Yeah, and I mean, this is the perfect time to visit. It's like 110 degrees. Exactly. Hey, Kelly, you're amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you. Yeah, isn't she, isn't she fantastic? You spelled her last name. Yes, L-U-C.